Africa joining us to ask Franklin a few questions. But before they do that, I want Franklin to do a bit of introduction of himself and just tell us his story. Franklin. Uh, absolutely. Um, first off, hi everyone. It's um, a, a pretty remarkable thing. I'm here in New York City the next two weeks before. Frankly, still sort of miraculous to me to me that I can sort of sit here in my apartment and see all of you all uh, across Africa. You're as inspired by that reality as I am. Um, and thank you to Google for creating the technology that allows for it. Um, I should probably start with a little bit of biographical information about myself. I. Uh, was born in South Georgia in the United States. Uh, my father is a doctor. My mother is a school teacher, or was a school teacher. Um, I have a younger brother who is a former professional footballer here in the United States, who's now in medical school, and a uh, activist. And um, you know, I've been working in the film industry for the last ten years. I. Uh, I went to Harvard for under my undergraduate education and thought I was going to go into politics. Mm -hmm. um, realized very quickly that politics was not where my heart was. Um, I wrote for a newspaper in Trinidad and Tobago for six months and then I moved to New York where I worked as a management consultant um, at a company called McKinsey. Um, I did that for about two years. I uh, was not very happy in that job and uh, realized that I've loved film for my entire life and picked up everything and moved to Los Angeles just uh, under 10 years ago. And uh, my, my sort of career path has been somewhat itinerant since arriving there. I, I first worked as an assistant, uh, which is basically a secretary to an agent at Creative Artist Agency, which is the largest uh, talent agency in Los Angeles. I then uh, worked as a creative executive, which is essentially a junior producer for um, a number of different producers. First, John Goldwyn, uh, who would run Paramount Pictures for a decade prior to becoming a producer. Uh, I worked for Leonardo DiCaprio's production company for two and a half years. Um, I worked for uh, the now deceased director, Sidney Pollack, uh, and Anthony Minghella who between them uh, directed movies like Tootsie and Out of Africa um, and Three Days of the Condor, for, in Sydney's case, and The Firm. Uh, Anthony directed um, Truly Madly Deeply, The English Patient, and um, Talented Mr. Ripley. Uh, after working for them, uh, I worked for Universal Pictures uh, for two years, where I worked on films like Fast and Furious 5, um, the Devil, and uh, It's Complicated. And then uh, I went to go work for Will Smith's company just over two years ago. Um, and I worked there until September when I, I left uh, to focus full-time on the blacklist, which um, was something that I'd started uh, seven years ago um, as a, a list of the most popular screenplays in Hollywood each year that hadn't yet been made. It was um, essentially a survey of all of my peers in the industry asking them to send me a list of their 10 favorite screenplays from that year that would not uh, be in theaters at the end of that year. So it was literally just, uh, what screenplays do you like? Forget for a moment whether they're going to make a billion dollars at the box office. Forget whether your boss likes them. Just tell me what you like. Um, and that list became an institution uh, in the industry surprisingly quickly. Um, I've done it for the last seven years. There have been about 600 screenplays that have been on that list. Um, about a third of them have been produced as feature films. Wow. Those movies have uh, made over 16 billion dollars in a worldwide box office. Wow. Um, 148 Oscar nominations, 25 wins. Uh, two of the last four best pictures, both Slumdog Millionaire and The King's Speech were both blacklist scripts. And uh, five of the last ten Oscars that were awarded for screenwriting were blacklist uh, scripts as well. And, and it's important for me to mention that, you know, a lot of these movies would have gotten made if the blacklist didn't exist. 
Um, but for some of them, the fact of being on the list and the fact that everyone in town and in the in the industry uh, pays attention to them after it's on the list means that uh, the process of getting them made and getting money to finance them gets catalyzed. And um, in addition, uh, if nothing else, it's been a really good predictor of success for a lot of these screenplays if they do get made. Um, and I think that's how Hollywood perceives it uh, first and foremost now. And then about a month ago, um, my partner, Dino Sayamich, and I launched a website that allows uh, anyone in the world who's written an English language screenplay uh, to upload their script, uh, pay a small fee to have it hosted and read by one of our readers that we've hired, and if it's good, it will get recommended to, right now, over 1,300 people working professionally in Hollywood, ranging from assistants at agencies, which is where I started, all the way up to studio presidents um, and, uh, and some A-list actors and directors as well. Wow. So that's my, uh, that's my brief biography. Um, it's far more important to me to uh, answer whatever questions you guys have than it is for me to talk about myself. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Now let's have a, a bit of introduction of the members, uh, starting with uh, Spore Dust. Can you can you hear me? Yes, we can definitely. Um, All right, introduce yourself quickly, name okay. and what you guys do. Okay, uh, we're Spore Dust. We are an animation company, local animation company. We we make cartoons here in Nigeria, and uh, we're just trying to bring out the best quality animation that we can with the resources we have here in Nigeria for the rest of the world, basically. So I am Shino Ajulo. I run the company. This is um, John Tomogwai. He works in marketing. Um, that also is Tokbe. She also is in marketing. And Bio is like the production. Um, supervisor. Ibro also works on marketing. So basically what we do is just make animation, make really good animation All and right. turn it out there. That's okay. what we do. All right. Now let's go to if I can you introduce yourself? Uh, we can hear you. Your volume. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, I'm Ifa in Chukwu Okocha, and I'm a radio presenter. I, pre I put and present entertainment on Ripa FM, Lagos, Nigeria. All right. So we move to Mate. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. OK. Um, so my name is Matt, and uh, I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I went to Carnegie Mellon University, and I graduated in 2011. Um, I worked in finance for a little bit, um, but I recently left my job, and I'm also uh, in sort of a life-searching mode. Um, and I've always loved movies and, and writing and sort of combining the two, and I'm uh, yeah, interested to, to hear your opinions. All right. Now let's go to Remy. Hi everyone, can you hear me? We can. All right, my name is Remy Lutumang. Um I'm a writer based in Lagos. Okay. Um, I've pretty much been a nomad on the professional level. I've been in advertising, broadcasting, banking, um, at least five industries over the last uh, seven years. And I've gathered uh, a lot of material based on the belief that no matter how complicated the story might seem, it's the underlying human story that's actually key. Hmm. That's deep. Okay. And that has actually informed on my interest in film and filmmaking. Um, I'm a voice actor, and I, as opposed to a voice artist, um, I do I work with uh, people on projects like uh, animation, short film, um, podcasts. You know, just stuff, just to open up room for the creativity, just get out there. You know, once it's out there, you feel that relief. You know. All right. Do you have a question for Franklin? 
Uh, I'm, you know what, uh, since I was the last to be introduced, let me be the last to ask questions on for the first round. I'm, I'm a gentleman like that. So. Okay. All right. Okay, I, I have a question for Franklin. Um, Franklin, what would you say is um, what makes a great screenplay? In your opinion, what makes a great screenplay? <laughs> Uh, that's a difficult question to answer. It's uh, uh, there. There are a lot of things. I th I think for me, um, the the thing that well, look, I, when you're reading a screenplay, as I've done professionally for the last uh, decade, I think the thing that distinguishes a great screenplay uh, from from a mediocre screenplay or one that's not worth anyone's time is the fact that. Uh, you keep turning the pages, um, and there are a lot of reasons why you might. But but essentially, it, it's that you keep wanting to know what happens next, hmm. and, and I think that, that that seems very simple. But the reality of that, and I think it's sort of getting back to what Remy was saying, is that it, no matter how complicated the story is, no matter how strange, no matter how unfamiliar, it really is about the underlying human story, um, and finding something a story that with a beginning, middle, and end that is incredibly specific to the characters that are experiencing it but is somehow universal to every human being um, you know the, the uh... You know, I, one of my bosses Sidney Pollack used to say that the only uh... the only real uh... stories worth telling were about love and were about war uh... on, on some level because they were the only two things that um, in thousands of years of human history, we have no better understanding now than we did several thousand years ago. Yeah. Um, and I think that in many ways that's true. I think that there are that there are realities of what it means to be human, and, and things that we all want as human beings that um, are, are true whether you're in Lagos or New York City or Pittsburgh um, or Los Angeles or Tokyo. Um, and it's really about telling a compelling story about people. Um, we're not people, actually. It can be robots or you know uh, birds or whatever it is, but about uh, someone experiencing the realities of life and pursuing those things that we all want. Um, and, and to, to paraphrase Shakespeare, enduring the slings and arrows of of, of life. Okay. Any question from anyone? Okay, if I, your question. Um, yes. Um, for now, I want to ask something between any Nigerian movie and what the perception of Hollywood is like. Okay, Franklin, did you get that? Um, I couldn't hear part of it. There was a little bit of a static behind it. Okay, she said, have you seen any Nigerian movie and what your opinion of Nigerian movie is generally? You know, I have to be honest, I don't have that much uh, exposure to Nollywood production. Um, I'm aware of it um, conceptually, I'm aware of the economics behind it, and I'm aware that it's the third largest film industry in the world. But um, unfortunately, there's not much in the way of, um, there, there's not much availability of Nollywood product here in the United States, um, which I think is something that Google's actually addressing by making uh, films available on, on YouTube. Um, m my understanding and again, this is based on very limited knowledge, um, is that production value in the Hollywood sense is relatively low, um, but that the, the amount of production um, and the sort of the local flavor uh, couldn't be more accurate. I think that the, one of the things that Hollywood, I think, is most intrigued by with Nollywood production and film generally is this, the sense that it is entirely local production. It is uh, production that is often done with sort of teams of people that sort of repeat different productions over and over again uh, with different stories but with the same actors um, sort of working almost in troupe as you would have uh, in theater troops years ago um, and that they, it does a remarkable job uh, of, of telling the stories that people want to see immediately which is something that Hollywood does a very bad job of because it takes three years to make a film uh, if not longer and by the time you've made the film itself, uh, that the reasons why people were interested in seeing it uh, have long since passed, um, which is a deep, deep problem in the Hollywood industry, um, and one of the reasons why the studios are having such a hard time right now. So it's I need to see more. I guess is, is the biggest point of that. Okay. Spoil those. Can you guys hear me? 
Yes, so we can hear you. Animations and you create things with your skills. So what's your question for Franklin? Um, storytelling, the way stories are told um, in the U.S. is very, very different from how it's told in Africa. It's That's my understanding, yeah. <laughs> it's the same basic concept, but the way it's delivered is where the difference is. Um, what would you say could help us better tell our stories? Well, let me uh, let me ask you a question first, though. Um, how how do you because you you guys have exposure to both, I would imagine, far more than I do. Um, what do you see as the big differences between the two in terms of how? Uh, you know, the, the Nollywood industry tells stories as opposed to how the way Hollywood does? I think it's the pacing, the pacing of the story, right? Um, we in Nollywood do, like, um, just go boy meets girl, there's problem, there's, there's family hater, and we get to the end. Right. Something like that, right? Um, the pacing in a Hollywood movie goes through everything that's actually in between. It's more detailed. It's more detailed, it's more... Um, Intricate, yes, those are the words. But in um, Nollywood, you just want to get to the end of the story, right? Exactly. That I think we will say the Nollywood one is like a summary, while the Hollywood one is more like a detailed presentation. That's interesting. I, I, you know, I think if I had to guess, then the 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 the, the thing to think most about in, in developing stories that are sort of more consistent with the the Hollywood approach as opposed to the Nollywood approach. What's funny about that is is that you'll have a lot of American movie fans complaining that uh, Hollywood films are now often too, you know, it may not be Boy Meets Girl, but it might be Boy Meets Car and Robots, uh, action sequence, action sequence, action sequence, movie's over. Um, but I think, that, uh, I think that a focus on character is really important. Yes. Um, you know, ultimately... When you have a story, let's say boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy has to you know uh, overcome family obstacles or whatever it is to get girl back. The the reason that you care about boy and girl and the obstacles they're going through and whether or not he gets the girl back at all is because you feel some sort of identification with that character. And I suspect that the the intricateness that you're perceiving really exists primarily to make the audience care about the characters. Um, and really be rooting for them. Um, it's a little bit like the other example I would use is, uh, I don't know if you, how many of you guys are, are football fans, I mean, Ameri like soccer, um, but it's, you know, you watch the game, but part of the reason why you watch the game and you care about the game is because you have some knowledge of the players and who they are and what their story is. And, and, and it's important to think of the movie less as just the game itself, but also as sort of the, the pre-game broadcast where you do the interviews and you find out that so-and-so was injured for the last year and so they're coming into this game and it's a lot more dramatic if they didn't score the final of the winning penalty kick. Um, you you want to give as much drama and as much opportunity for the audience to, to know and like and root for your characters to, to get what it is that they want um, and overcome whatever obstacles it is to getting what they want. Um, than it is just sort of giving you the actual beats of the story where this happens, this happens, this happens. You want to give the audience a reason to care why those things are happening. Definitely. Emotion, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, there's this great quote um, by, by the, and this score to us will probably uh, appeal to you guys, by Hayao Miyazaki who did Spirited Away and yeah, yeah. other films. Um, mm -hmm. And by the way, his storytelling is... is as antithetical to Hollywood storytelling as exists. <laughs> but um, he has a, a, I'm paraphrasing, but, but he wrote this manifesto in the early 80s, and, and sort of the, 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 the main sort of line that I took out of it is, is that a popular movie must be full of true emotion. Uh, the entrance should be low and wide so that everyone can be welcomed in, but the exit should be high and purified. It shouldn't be anything that uh, enlarges or enriches the lowness. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really good uh, a standard for, for all filmmakers to judge their own work by. Um, is there emotional content? Is there, do you have the reasonable expectation that someone watching your film will have an emotional experience in addition to an entertaining one? Um, is it something that everyone can enjoy, uh, at least initially? And does it take the audience to a place where they leave the... Uh, the theater or their their mobile device or their their you know living room 
do they leave looking at the world a little bit differently than they did with, before they started? Um, if you can accomplish all of those things, uh, odds are not only will you have made a, a really good film, um, but you'll make one that, that people are willing to pay money for um, over and over. Um, and I think the best Hollywood films and the ones that are most successful generally aspire to and most often succeed in accomplishing that. All right. Nate, can you hear me? Uh, Matt, um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. So have you seen any Nollywood movies? I have not seen any Nollywood movies. You've not seen any Nollywood movies? No. You've got to pay for that. I need to... There's a lot of like international movies I need to see, but I've started with a lot of independent movies in the last. Okay, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, what would you say the big difference between uh, maybe like book writing mm -hmm. um, and writing a screenplay? Because you see a lot of uh, you see a lot of books, um, obviously being made into movies. Silver Linings Playbook, the most recent example. Um, like, in terms of uh, the extracurricular thoughts that go into a book that um, maybe in a screenplay you miss or that you don't see as much of, like, the character's personality or the, the author's personality, rather? Yeah, I, I think the big difference is actually not... It's, it's funny that you mentioned Silver Linings Playbook. Um, for those of you guys in, uh, in Nigeria, Silver Linings Playbook is a film that, that, came, out la that came out last weekend. Um, with Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence. Funnily enough, I was actually the one that optioned that book uh, when it went out in wow. manuscript form when I was working for Mirage. That's awesome. Um, and hired David O. Russell to write it. It's, <laughs> um, I think the big difference between writing books and writing screenplays, um, and I think for, and this is just a good lesson generally, is that um, a novel oftentimes is about the inner monologue of the characters, uh, assuming that you're working with a, a sort of third person omniscient or first person uh, point of view. Whereas a screenplay, you're basically describing what, you, what you're going to see on screen. And that's all you really can do. Like, you can add all kinds of information that you don't see on screen, or you can write what a character is thinking. But at the end of the day, uh, all the director and all the producer is going to be able to put on screen is what you describe as being on screen, what's going to fill the frame. Um, and you have to communicate the uh, character's state of mind. You have to c communicate... Anything that you want to communicate has to be done largely visually or through dialogue. Um, whereas there are a million other uh, sort of techniques at your dis uh, disposal when you're writing a novel. Um, I think that's probably the biggest difference, um, and I think that's a, it's a learned skill. Um, you know, when it comes to writing a screenplay for Hollywood or Nollywood or Bollywood or any other film industry, um, you there you can always have. Um, an, an authorial point of view. You can always have your own authorial style. Um, but it, it's really important and really all that ultimately matters in terms of what the movie is going to look like based on your screenplay is what you've put on the page that can be shown on screen. Everything else is unnecessary. Okay. Um. Uh, but Bola, I, think we, I don't think we can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me now? Oh, there we go. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. You guys have done a bit of animation. Can you take us through the process from your script all the way to the very first scene? Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, we yes. can. Okay. Um, it all started from the script. In fact, from the concepts. Then we take it all from scripts to the screenplay. Then from there we go into storyboards. From storyboards we go into animatics. From animatics we start drawing frames. Then we go into sound. Can, At I, same ask time. Can I ask who writes your scripts? Um, his name is Oricha. Oricha. Yes, his name is Oricha. You name or stage name? <laughs> <laughs> That's his real name. Um, Franklin, Franklin, you know why I asked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you yeah, know what there's a sort of subtext that I'm missing language. here? <laughs> Orisha simply means a god. Orisha, <laughs> 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 his name is Orisha, not Orisha. <laughs> you understand the difference? Oh, okay, Orisha, not Orisha. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. Right. <laughs> now, um, 
<laughs> yeah, he has a team that works with him, and the entire team comes together to write basically our screenplay or our script. Um, then they go straight from script to storyboards, then storyboards to animatic. Animatic, the sound people take it at the same time, and the frames, the people that draw the frames, the animators. So we have the animators and the sound guys working almost immediately. They give it to the inkers and the colorists. Then colorists and the inkers give it to the compositors. Then we have the background people also doing their backgrounds. Add everything together, we have our cartoon or our animation. Wow. Wow. That should be a lot of work. Is is quite a co complicated process. I mean, it, 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 there is a great deal of respect for the animated world, even within Hollywood, especially because of the success of Pixar. Mm. But um, but yeah, no, animation animation's crazy. <laughs> All right, Ren. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Okay, you could mimic Obama, right? Uh, I've, yes, uh, I believe so, yes, 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 okay. very often, actually, yeah. I think you should try Franklin. Well, uh, that would be a bit difficult, because uh, I'd have the glasses, and um, then, of course, there's the... Uh, I just there's... need voice mimic. <laughs> just a voice mimic? Yeah. All right, um, well, one of, the things I, one of the things I like about Franklin is that he's uh, pretty much above board, straight, picks his words very carefully. Um, are you into the mimic already or we're just about getting there? No, oh, I think we're in the mimic already. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it, was, it, was actually, it was actually quite good. <laughs> what's your question to Franklin? All right, um, Franklin, hi. Um, th this, this, is a, it's been a, this has been a challenge for me. Um, if I bring up the, the comparison first, if um, I believe this, right? Um, in terms of poetry, the highest form a poem can go is actually music. Okay? Exactly. Um, as in the collaborative effort behind the presentation of the work. Um, as, a writer my, as a writer myself, um, one of the challenges that I've faced in Nigeria is not so much as getting people to like or not like what I write. Yeah? Um, but having the being able to translate it, I will never forget my first experience with screenwriting. Like you said accurately, it is a learned skill. Absolutely. Yeah, um, it broke me for the first year. You know, because I'm a I, I I I like to do a lot of visual uh, visualizing. Uh, first point, uh, sorry. Um, the thought patterns of the characters and things like that. And as you said, basically it's what you see on screen and what you hear and the dialogue. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, let me just get over myself. I just, in, have there been times when you knew that something as good as it felt or as good as it seemed would not actually make it on screen? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, there are definitely times when you read a screenplay mm. and as much as you want to imagine the screenplay being successful, when I say successful I don't mean just critically, I mean sort of justifying its inevitable cost to make the film uh, at a high level. There are definitely times when you read something and say, this is beautifully written, I'm inspired by this story, I can't imagine a scenario that allows this to get made. That definitely happens. Um, and and those, those experiences are typically, they're laden with frustration and sadness, and it's, uh, it's incredibly difficult. Um, usually when that happens for me, or when it did happen over the last nine years, uh, you know, I would then meet with that writer and say, look, I think you're a brilliant writer. What else can we work on together? Because I, I can't figure out how to do this in the context of my current job, but I'd love to find a way to work together. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the sad reality, I mean, I think, and, and, and the economics are obviously different in, in Nigeria than they are in the United States, but in the, in the U.S. film industry, 
you know, look, there, there's certainly no government sponsor of, of the arts at all. Um, and, and making films is very expensive. The average American studio film uh, over the last few years has cost over $70 million to produce. Uh, it's another $35 million on average to market them. Uh, most of the major films that you see in the summer cost over $150, $200 million to produce. Um, and so unless you have no desire to make a second film, uh, it's very important that whatever your first film is makes enough money so that people that gave you the money in the first place can get their money back plus a little bit. Um, and as a consequence, there, there are a lot of screenplays. And this is really where the blacklist came from and sort of what the blacklist is designed to support. Scripts that for whatever reason people don't have a great deal of commercial faith in and, and it's necessary to either prove that they can work or um, just acknowledge that these are excellent examples of a writer's writing but they're probably not going to be made into films. Um, and that's difficult. It really is, but but there are realities, you know, it, and this is, why I think, one of the reasons why I'm both drawn to film and why I find it incredibly frustrating is that, as an art form, it is the only art form that requires a lot of capital to mount. Like, if you want to write a novel, you can get 10 U.S. dollars, some paper and a pen, and write a novel. You can scan it and upload it to the Internet, and your novel's available. Uh, if you want to make a, a film, a feature film, you know, even by the sort of comparatively inexpensive standards of a Nollywood production, you're still looking at, you know, a couple thousand U.S. dollars, tens of thousands of U.S. dollars. If you're making it in Hollywood, tens of millions of U.S. dollars. Um, and so as a consequence, there are, in addition to creative concerns, there are also commercial uh, and economic concerns that one has to be cognizant of when, you, when you're making the decision whether to make the film. Um, and I, I think that's a fascinating sort of intellectual problem and an incredibly frustrating uh, artistic one. All right. We have someone joining us, Shio. Can you hear me? Uh, let me give you a little background. We are, we are on Hangout with Franklin Leonard, and um, the topic is the role of screenplay in visual storytelling. Do you have a question for Franklin? I think she is. You, you need to you need to increase the volume on your system. No, no. I think you muted her actually. Yeah, I think you muted her. Okay. Can you go to your mic? Your mic icon. Okay. We will be back to Shia as soon as we can get that sorted. Now, I need to ask Franklin a question. Um, for people who will be putting in 15 minutes or less stories in the African Knowledge Short Film competition, mm -hmm. how would you, what would you, what would be your advice to them on how to capture the audience in 15 minutes? How can they wow the world in 15 minutes? That's a great question. Um, I, I think that 15 minutes is a very short amount of time. You know, it's uh, it, it's it's amazing, but it's amazing how much you actually can accomplish during that time. I think that the 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 advice I have is a few things. The first is try to tell a complete story. Um, don't try to tell the beginning of something bigger. Like uh, acknowledge that you only have 15 minutes, uh, and try to find a story with a beginning, middle, and end. Um, the second thing is to be very very efficient in your storytelling. Um, there's a tendency, especially with, rel with with new filmmakers, to try to you know begin the scene at the very beginning of the scene when someone walks into a room, and, and end the scene when the conversation is over and they leave. Um, you know, remember that the audience will fill in most of the additional conversation uh, when they, you know, just at, because they're familiar with scene storytelling. So try to get in and out of scenes as quickly as possible. Um, and unless it's ab absolutely necessary to advance either the uh, the plot of your story or the emotional depth of your story, it's probably not necessary for the story itself. Um, so be wary of a lot of unnecessary dialogue. Try to get to the core of the story. Um, make sure the core of the story includes some emotional depth. Um, and then, um, you know, look... Great visuals are always going to be impressive. I think spore dust and, and animators, you have a special advantage of that because it's not going to cause, uh, cost you a great deal more money um, because you're, you're working on a computer. Um, 
and sort of have the freedom to create huge uh, landscapes without uh, having to shoot huge landscapes. Um, and then the other thing I'd say is that try, if at all possible, in your first two minutes of that 15 minutes to create a situation that will make an audience say, oh, well, I have to know how this wraps up. Um, you know, in sort of Hollywood screenwriting uh, sort of part, you know, language, it, it's called the inciting incident. Um, you see this a lot in, in big feature films. That they, they start off with a real bang uh, so that you're like, okay, I know exactly what's going on or I don't know what's going on, but I have to figure out what's going on. Uh, you want to draw your audience in as quickly as possible because you don't have a lot of uh, sort of temporal real estate to do it. Um, so you want to go in, get into the story as quickly as you can, uh, go as deep as you can uh, that will allow you to sort of get out of it by, by the end of 15 minutes. All right. Thanks for that advice. So, Shayo, are you on now? Yeah, I think so. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can. Okay, fantastic. Okay, hi, my name is Shayo. Hi, Shayo. Um, yeah, I was invited, um, and I think it's very, I'm, I'm so sorry I'm late. Um, I actually write scripts, or I write scripts for musicals. And um, for me, I, I, kind of, I kind of stumbled into it uh, from church, and um, people kind of say it's really good. So I'm, I'm wondering how to take that from just writing for fun to writing musicals commis um, commercially, if, if you understand what I mean. Because I've written three productions that are about one hour long, and each of them have an average of 11 to 12 songs. So I'm, I'm thinking of how to move that from just writing for a small screen to moving to a bigger stage. Um, I think I do. I mean, I think the important thing is to remember, I mean, look, the writing professionally is different from writing for fun in that uh, you are servicing an audience and you, someone's paying you to do it. Um, and uh, so you have to uh, sort of give them what they want in addition to what you want writing for fun. But beyond that, it's not all that different. Um, you know, I at the end of the day, writing is an artistic pursuit, um, and it's a pursuit that whether you're getting paid for it or whether you're not, or whether you have an audience that you know is going to be there uh, when you're done, or whether it's just for yourself, um, the process doesn't really need to change all that much. I, I think that the important thing, though, is to, you know, I, there are very few writers I know that seek out opportunities to write the sort of things that they themselves would not want to see. Um, and so my, my best advice to you as a writer is to, to write something that, that you yourself would want to see. So if you're writing musicals that are inspired by uh, the church, uh, write musicals for other people who are part of the church um, and make sure they're enjoyable and entertaining and, and you'll probably be okay. Um, also, I, I have a feeling that, that musicals inspired by the church is, is probably a very lucrative market in Nigeria. Um, and so I, I wish you the best. I feel like there's probably a lot of business there if you if you do it well. All right, thanks. We have Grace joining us. Can you hear me? Hi, Bobola. Hi, Frankie. Yeah. Hi, hi, everyone. Hi, how are you? Hi, hi. So, do you have a question for Franklin? Uh, well, I'm just thinking, you know, um, that if, for instance. We have a script, not a fully written screenplay, but just the treatment, something um, off the top, just a draft. Is it possible to co-write with a Hollywood writer and then, you know, find producers out there who could, you know, partner with us to get it done? It's uh, uh, Franklin. Before you take that, let's uh, introduce ourselves. She's a filmmaker. So Grace, please introduce yourself. Okay, hi Franklin. My name is Grace Edwin Okon. Um, a writer, more of a storyteller. I really don't like to write, but you know, I like to tell stories because writing is a lot of work. It is. But I do it when I have to. Um, I'm, well, so I would say I'm a storyteller, a writer, an actress, and a producer. So. Got it. That's it. Yeah, so I'm thinking, because I do have a script that, or a storyline, not a script. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm thinking it's something that, if it's a collaboration with Hollywood, it would actually, you know, be, be um, a better deal than if we just produce it locally here. So I'm wondering yeah. if I have a treatment, can 
I collaborate or co-write with a Hollywood writer and also get um, funding from all that producers? I think it's very difficult. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I do think it's very difficult because the reality is that a you would, to, to, in order to even to get it to your treatment to Hollywood or someone in Hollywood, um, I, there's no easy way to make that happen. Now, if you have if you have connections, if you have resources in Hollywood where you can get that treatment to someone who might like it, they very well might say. I'm really inspired by this story. I'd love to co-write it with you. In which case, you can absolutely do that. Um, but I would say that it's very unusual, um, and I I wouldn't even know, after having worked in the industry for ten years, where to start in in, in making something like that happen beyond a personal relationship with a screenwriter or an actor in Hollywood. Um, but I mean, but but the other thing is this: I I would encourage you. So you have. A, a, a treatment, and you're looking yeah. for a you're looking essentially to collaborate with a writer. Um, yeah. I would encourage you to look for a screenwriter in in Nigeria uh, who can maybe do a better version or a sort of more complete version of that screenplay. And then with the screenplay, you ha you may have an opportunity to send it to Hollywood either via the Blacklist website or via the various screenwriting competitions that exist. Um, and because it really isn't about it, it, the ideas are commonplace. They, they exist everywhere, no matter how good the idea is. There are a lot of great ideas. It really comes down to Hollywood is most interested as a starting place in the screenplay or the game or you know video game or remake. But for the most part, for an original idea, it's about the screenplay. So I would encourage you to find a, a, another writer in, in Nigeria to collaborate with and get the screenplay to a place where it's something that you would want to share with Hollywood is something that they could do. All okay, right. Thank you, me. <laughs> can you hear me? Sorry? Oluyomi, can yes, you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, yes, I can. You, you were busy. Yes. You, you, you Sorry, I joined my question. Do you have a question for Franklin? Okay, yeah. I wanted to ask um, when you when the, when the script comes across the blacklist um, table, what stands out to you? Is it the um, is it the story? Is it the great character you notice? Um, the great great character journey, like the hero's journey. What exactly stands out for you that says yes? I want to make this script out of the thousands that come across your table. Yeah. What's different for you? I think for me. Uh, and I don't know if everybody heard that question. I think that the question was is sort of when a script comes across my, my desk or my table, what is it that stands out and what makes it, what differentiates a script that you want to make um, and that you want to invest the time and effort into making from one that you don't. Um, I think for me, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, I, I think for me it's about, um, no, I, actually, it's about two things. It, the first is uh, Usually, I'm looking for something that that sets an extraordinarily high bar for what it's trying to do, where I can't quite believe this is the story that a person is going to tell, and then they pull it off. So you, you're reading and you're 30 pages in, and you're like, you know, I don't know about this, but if they pull it off, it's going to be amazing. And as for me, just the best movies generally is like you can't quite believe that someone's taking the time to tell the story because it's so odd or so interesting. Um, but I think it, it's one of two things. Um, Basically, you're looking for scripts that are either very familiar. There are stories that have been told before. They're simple hero's journeys. They're like taken where it's like, you know, uh, man's daughter's kidnapped. Man decides to get the daughter back and, you know, revenge the, you know, the kidnapping. And those are very straightforward. Those stories have been told for as long as human beings have been telling stories. Um, but if they're done amazingly well, you want to do something that's either totally familiar um, but so well done, it seems unfamiliar it, because of the level of execution. Or you're looking for something that is uh, completely unfamiliar that normally you would outright reject, but because of how well it's done, you, you by the end you're like, I can't believe no one's ever done this before. I wish that I had seen, you know, I wish seen it ten years ago. So you want to basically either give Hollywood what they want, or give Hollywood what they didn't know they wanted. What? Um, and I think if you do one or both of those things, you're, you're well on your way. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you. Thank you, Franklin. 
Now I need I need us to to vote. I want Franklin back on Hangout sometimes next year. If you want him, please give me a thumb up. That that, that I, I can, how can I say no? <laughs> okay. So we have you locked down sometimes next year. Sometime next year, just let me know when. Okay, final word from you. No, before you, I want everyone to say final word in, on this hangout. Starting okay. with Tayo. Um, uh, oh, your volume. Like, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. All right, thank you so much for being here. I'm so sorry I joined late. I, as always, I missed out a lot of things. Um, for me, I, it's, a, it's a funny story because I'm an investment banker, but I love to write. I love to write a lot. And so the, the reason why I said church is that the church provided the platform for me to write to see that I can add to it. And so I don't intend to just write for church, but to write for all kinds of things. So it's amazing to see that um, people are actually writing and doing something great with their writing, which is very encouraging for me to actually pursue it and go all the way. So for me, hangouts like this and seeing other people join the hangout kind of encourages me to want to write better and do more things and all that. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Let's go to Oluyomi. Your final word. I think Olu is muted. Uh, yeah. Olu. Let's go on to mate. All right. Can I still ask a quick question or questions are done? OK. Just a quick yeah. question. You will take it when it's rounding up. OK, fine. Thank you. Um, what would you recommend to this sort of more life advice, I guess, a 23-year-old who's been passionate about movies and writing, etc., for as much as I can remember, um, what would be your sort of advice if you want to get into that industry? Um, would you le leverage connections or uh, any advice you would give? Um, I, will, and I can answer that question in my wrap-up. It, it, it's very yeah. nice to do it. All very right. Nice. Remy, final word. Sorry? Final words? Yeah. All right. Uh, Franklin, uh, thank you. Because every creative, every true creative suffers a lot. They suffer for their arts. They suffer when they're trying to deliver it through. And they suffer, especially when someone has, it might just be a slight negative comment. Maybe even a neutral comment, but just get crushed by it. You know, and uh, what you're doing, what you've done, what you've achieved with Blacklist, it goes to prove a point that, in the end, every creative will be justified for their work. So well, thank so you. Right. Also, thank you. If I and Grace, your volume. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Quite enlightening, though I'm um, not really, really. I love acting, and I intend to do that later. But um, it's been really, really eye-opening. It's like an eye-opening session. So I have like one question. I don't know if I can just throw it out and do. Go ahead. Yeah, no, of course. Okay. Now, um, I once spoke with them, Charles and your I don't know if you know me. Calabar. And I asked him of his perception, you know, about Nollywood movies. And I also spoke with one guy, the extender, the actor, the extender, the extender, and all that. They both think um, Nollywood, um, it's been, they kind of over exaggerate, you know, they blow up um, situations and all that. Now, I know probably exaggeration might be an element in script writing, you know, screen here and all that. How far can a producer take, should the producer take that? Take that, or do you think it should not be things should not be exaggerated, or how far? Even if they feel like it's exaggerated and blow certain things, how far do you think one can? You know, I, I will, I will, I will include that in my wrap up as well. Okay, great. Well, thank, you, thank you for having us. Oh, of course. Um, hello everyone. Thanks, Franklin. Thanks, Afrinoli. Thanks, Google. Um, this is a fantastic opportunity. Unfortunately, I had to audition some people so. I couldn't come in as early, you know, as I would have desired to. All the same, I really look forward to another hangout, especially with you, Franklin. 
who knows? You probably will co write with me on my treatment. <laughs> You know, um, and I, I really look forward to a fantastic um, Nollywood because we are almost 20 now. I mean, 20 years. Nollywood is almost 20 years old, and pretty soon I'm sure we'll be producing films that who knows might be better than Hollywood. Actually. All right. <laughs> Bordo. Final words. Um. Before the final was, we have just one question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. First of all, we'd, we'd like all of you to check out our little short film we did on um, for, for a presentation. It's called Chicken Core. Mm -hmm. on, on YouTube. Chicken Core Rise of Kings. And um, my question is to Franklin um, what do you think, personally, what do you personally think it will take? Um, a relatively low budget animated movie to break into the American or worldwide markets. What do you think is the um, thing? This is this is actually perfect. So I can I can wrap I can wrap that into my final answer, my final thoughts as well. All right. So, and, and Franklin, your call, yeah. Franklin. All right. Um, so here's the thing. You know, we're sitting uh, at various computers several thousand miles apart at the moment, probably at least 10,000 kilometers between all of us. Um, this would not have been possible two years ago, three years ago. Um, the, the rate at, at which the process by which films can be made is changing so unbelievably dramatically um, that it's really impossible for any one industry, whether it be Hollywood or Bollywood or Nollywood, uh, to keep up. Um, the, you know, 10 years ago when I first started thinking about working in film, uh, to even put together a, a, a mediocre short film would have required tens of thousands of dollars in cameras and, and lighting and, and all, and things along those lines. Now it is legitimately possible to make a feature film, uh, with a Blackberry or a Nokia phone or an iPhone, um, and edit it on your laptop and put it out. Um, and I think it's remarkable also the extent to which uh, animation has changed um, and made it easier for animation to be made, uh, you know, in this day and age, and it will continue to get easier. Um, I think that it's possible, um, and, and, also, and that's just a matter of production, and then when it comes to distribution, you can put your film up online and anyone around the world can see it via sites like YouTube and find it via sites like Google. Um, I think we live in a, in a singular time. I think we live in a singular time when it comes to the transmission of ideas, the transmission of images, um, and the transmission of stories. Um, when you think about the fact that, you know, decades ago, if you wanted to hear a story, um, at, or a hundred years ago, you'd, you'd hear a story and you'd hear it transmitted, you know, by someone. Um, and you would only be able to hear it because someone else had heard it and share it with you. Uh, and then there were books, and then there were uh, there was music, um, and then there was television, and there was satellite. But now there's this thing called the internet that allows you to put something that you've made and make it available to literally two thirds of the world that has access to it via mobile or the internet. Um, and that is unlike anything that has ever existed before. Um, and, and what that means fundamentally for me is is that it becomes less about sort of tricks. Um, and big budgets and things like that, and, and infinitely more about a, a good story well told. Um, yes, it should be beautiful. Try to try to make the films that you participate in look as pretty as possible, because no one wants to go look at ugly images. Um, but but the reality is is that anyone right now um, can make something remarkable and share it with the world and have the world embrace it. It doesn't matter if you're in Nigeria, it doesn't matter if you're in Los Angeles, it doesn't matter if you're in India, it doesn't matter if you're in Pittsburgh. There really is no limitation um, on making something and sharing it with billions of people. Um, I think the best example of that, and I don't know if, the, if this, this song has made it to Nigeria, but the Korean pop sensation Psy. And yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. That video has been seen 700 million times. I'd say a 90% of those people at least have no idea what the man is saying because he's rapping in Korean. Um, 
make something remarkable. And, you know, say what you will about the, mu the music video, but it is remarkable, if only for the fact that it's been seven, seen 700 million times. Make something remarkable, make something singular, make something human, and the rest should take care of itself. But it has to be remarkable. You can't be good enough. You have to really aspire for greatness, and there's no reason why the next great filmmaker can't come from Nigeria. And, in fact... There's every reason to believe that the next uh, great filmmaker in the world should come from a place like Nigeria. Um, you know, in many ways, living in Lagos, uh, I'm sure you guys experience more capital D drama than most Americans do on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, and, and, and mind that and use that, and whether it's for a cop film or a fantasy film or a romantic comedy or whatever it is, there is no reason why any of you... Uh, can't be the next worldwide great storyteller. Um, and I think it's really remarkable the platform that Afrinal is providing to, uh, to identify that um, and to support the, the people who are making films um, that will be, you know, a significant part of African film culture uh, over the next 10 to 15 years. And I, it's, it's been a tremendous honor already to be a part of it, and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. All right. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Franklin. And thank you to my every one of you who, uh, who was able to make it to this Hangout. This is the first in the series of the Masterclass Hangout for the Afri Knowledge Short Film Competition. We will have a whole lot more as the competition proceeds. And Franklin, you will be one of our judges when submission ends in January. Yep. And we will be, we will be excited to see the 10 you will shortlist from the thousands that will come in. We've had submissions from South Africa, from Zimbabwe, from Tanzania, from Kenya, from Nigeria, from Ghana. And it's amazing what people are submitting and we, we, we know that a whole lot more will come in before the deadline. And thank you to everyone who made this broadcast. This thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for having us. Have an Be well. And those are Thank books. Yeah, Read them to get creative. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all. Thanks yeah, a lot. Have a great yeah, day. Thanks, right. Happy Thanksgiving, Franklin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>